Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's William. I'm a power platform specialist based in Melbourne, Australia. And uh, if you don't already know, and if you've been following my channel, you might know, I'm actually of Dutch origin. Um, I've been learning Dutch and I've been looking at the Dutch culture and exploring my uh, heritage. And I thought today I'd combine the two together. So I'm going to show you how to build an application um, that uses a data source to actually build a map inside Power Apps and um, allow you to interact with that map using um, SVG files. So these are scalable vector graphics. And I got this inspiration from another consultant out of Germany. Um, and I'll put the link down below uh, to his pages. Um, but this was, uh, I thought was really, really good to, 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 to show you. So let's have a look at the application. Here's the application. Um, basically what we have is we have a, a, a Power Apps Canvas app. Um, this is the Netherlands. We have a map that's been drawn on the screen. Um, and what I've done here is I've hooked this up to a data source. Um, it's got now all the information about the population um, for all of the, the, the states or the re, uh, regions of the Netherlands. And it's ordered them uh, in descending population order, but it's also color coded the graph based from um, a bright orange to the lowest um, orange down here, um, basically. Um, uh, in in population, and so if you choose a different um, a different uh, region like uh, this one over here, then it basically highlights it and then gives you information about the population up here. So if I go to Friesland, which is uh, where my heritage is all from, um, Luarden uh, is the capital of Friesland, and they have uh, this is twenty twenty one data, so six hundred and fifty one thousand four hundred and thirty five uh, people. Um, which is 3.7% of the total population of the Netherlands. Um, and if I compare that to Australia, um, I go over to Australia, um, again, get all the states of Australia, and we can see all of the states around here and where the capital is, Canberra. Um, we go down to Victoria, where I am, second most largest population of Australia, 6.65 .6 million uh, people or 25% of the population that's down here in Victoria. So how did I build this? So I'm going to go through the steps to, um, to, to build this. Um, and um, it's not as complicated as you might think. The first thing you're going to do is actually use um, a, a scalable vector graphic of a map. So the best way to get those maps is to go to mapsvg.com. Um, you can basically get maps from all over the world, including a world map. But if, for instance, you're in the US, you wanted to get a US map, you can get a US map. If you wanted to get a US map with the counties, um, then you can get a US map with all the different counties um, are laid out. If you want to get one with uh, the short labels for all the states, you can do that as well. Um, I've gone down here to the maps of the rest of the countries, and I've downloaded, obviously, Australia, and I've downloaded the Netherlands. Uh, and they uh, came down here. So the secret source is basically to go into the SVG file using something like Notepad, and you'll get out um, the information in inside this SVG file. Now, the the bits here that you want to know is the is each of the states is going to be a separate path, and it's made up of a couple of things. One is an ID, one is a name or a title. And the other one is the coordinates on how to actually draw that state. And then this is a lot of numbers and so forth like that. But we, I'm going to show you how to extract this information and actually um, pull it into, into, a, um, into a, another file. So what I've done is I've created a text, uh, sorry, an Excel spreadsheet inside a Microsoft Teams site. Um, it's called Country XLS. If I open this up. Um, what I've done is I've created two tabs, one called the Netherlands and one called Australia. Um, and then I've created a whole heap of columns in a table. I've given the table a name. So if you go to here and you look at the table, it's got a name called the Netherlands and Australia is similar as well with Australia. So here we've basically got uh, a column called the ID, which is just the um, short name of, a, of the state uh, with the country code as well. Um, and the long name of the, the, the region the population, um, I got that from another website. I was able to just go and get the current populations and I put those in manually. And then the, um, and the name of the capital city. 
Now, this is the next column here, which is the coordinates. And so what I was able to do was to take the information from here. So I just grabbed everything inside this D line minus the M and the space. So I started with that first number, went across to the end of the line, and I came back to just before the space, before the Z and the double quote. Copied that out and pasted into the column. Um, we'll come back to the city coordinates, X, Y coordinates, which I had to do manually. Um, but basically, that's all you needed to get started. So we've got that for news uh, for the Netherlands, and we've also done that exactly the same uh, for uh, the Australian ones as well. So then, what I've done is on the screen, um, I have an invisible property of the the Netherlands screen, um, and I go off and I do a few things. So first of all, I get the information from the Excel spreadsheet. Actually, first of all, let's connect that Excel spreadsheet up. So the first thing was to add data. And here was to basically type Excel. And I used Excel Online Business, connected it to my tenant, found the, um, the team site, which was Map Demonstration, found the document library, the general folder, and then that Excel spreadsheet. And once you click that, you can choose which tables you want to bring in, connect those in, and then you can actually say which one of these is your unique ID. Um, and again, with this one here, you can also choose that one for your unique ID and you click connect. Once that's done, you get two data sources um, identified, one called Australia, one called the Netherlands. And so then you can use those data sources inside um, your, your application. So here I'm actually clearing the collection um, and I'm loading uh, into a collection called RAW, um, all, the, all the records from the Netherlands table. I'm actually finding the maximum population um, uh, of uh, so the the, um, the the what the 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 state that's got the biggest population. So I'm just trying to find out what the biggest population is, um, and I, that'll become clearer for, um, down below. Um, and I also find out um, what the total population of the of the country is as well by summing up the, all the records. Then I need to actually do some magic sauce about the opacity. So here I'm actually doing conversion. So I'm actually adding a new um, new column to the table called opacity. And with this, I'm actually basically doing a calculation, um, finding a uh, color, um, and then actually um, basically gradually decreasing the opacity um, or increasing the opacity of that, um, that color uh, from, the, from a color down to, um, and converting it to hexadecimal. Um, uh, if you don't understand the text, that's fine. Just copy paste it. It's fine. Um, you can actually just start at 255 and go to zero. Um, and that will give you um, uh, a slightly different look and feel. I'll show you what that looks like, first of all. So if I was to do this um, and then go off to Australia and back to the Netherlands, you'll see that they are, are, they're a lot more orange and a lot more darker. Um, so that's one way of doing it. I'd like to start just a little bit lighter. So I went to 220. Um, with a base of 55, so it never get below 55, and it starts at 220. So um, that's color codes. Um, color codes go from zero to um, 255. Um, so what I'm doing here is um, coordinating to go from 55 to 220 instead. All right. So once I've got that collection in place, um, I'll just have to uh, go off and on again. There we are. Oop, that didn't quite work, did it? Uh, I've just ruined that demonstration. So let's do 220. Okay, back to back to working again. Um, all right. So in this particular case, we've got um, a couple of controls on here. We've got a um, we've got a uh, gallery control. The gallery control is basically just hooked to the um, Netherlands um, data source uh, and sorted by decreasing uh, population. Um, I have a, in that I have a, um, just a circle uh, with a fill. And this is where that opacity comes into play. So basically you pick your default color and then you apply an opacity to it. Um, and that opacity will be decreasing as the population goes down. Um, over here we have um, the, uh, the, just a hook to the, um, 
to the name of the of the state or the region. And here we have um, a population uh, formula, which basically takes the population divided by a million and then puts in um, a formula to convert it to a number, um, puts an M on the end and makes it look pretty. All right, so that's um, that form. And then over here, we actually have just a single image control. Um, now, an image control is interesting because now what you can do with an image control, instead of just um, connecting it to an image, we can actually write code in here. Now, don't get overwhelmed with what you're seeing here. It's pretty simple. Um, and most of it actually lived with inside that, um, that this, um, this SVG file. So you'll notice that the top up here, we basically have an SVG um, tag. Uh, we also have um, um, some sizings. We have all the paths, and then we close out our SVG. We're going to replicate this with inside this, 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 um, this box here. So we basically start off by actually declaring a, um, an SVG um, uh, data source to tell it that this image is actually an SVG. And we also uh, include here um, some information. Now, these are the important parts about the, um, the widths and the, and the view box. Um, uh, if you don't know how to do that, you, you just sort of like match the sort of sizes that the, the, the document, um, the SVG file you downloaded had, um, and that should be fine. Then what I've done is I've created a number of layers. So basically the first one is I've used the concat function. Um, and here I've gone across the entire collection. What concat does is it allows you to um, um, create uh, many instances of the text that you're about to create. So this 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 path, one for each of the um, members of that collection. So in this particular case, uh, I think there's 14 um, or so states um, defined in that spreadsheet in the Netherlands collection. Actually, we can have a look. Here they all are here. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to put a path. Um, so it's going to get uh, a fill of orange with the opacity. So that's that decreasing opacity with a white stroke of three borders around it. That's that, that border around it. And it's going to put a title, um, give it a title of the name. And then this is where the magic comes in. So this is where we're going to say, um, D equals dash M space. That was what we didn't copy from the um, uh, original um, SVG file. Then we actually copied the coordinates and then we actually have the space Z that um, uh, exclamation mark, uh, sorry, single quote, um, forward slash and an angle bracket to close it out. So this actually then, what that does is it builds each of those states in the color that's decreasing around um, from the highest populated state to the um, to the lowest populated state, um, which is Zealand uh, down here as well. So you can basically get get all of those coming out. The next thing that we did was we created a um, a layer which was just the selected one. So when I select um, Frieshland uh, here, it goes and puts a black border around it. So how I did that was to create this second layer. And basically for that one, I just duplicated it. But, but instead of using um, uh, all of the, uh, the collection, um, I'm just using the one um, ID that's for the selected item of the gallery. Uh, also do the opacity and all those sort of things coming from it um, and, the, and the, the coordinates from that particular gallery. But all I've done here is changed the stroke to be a width one instead of three and of black color instead of um, white. That's pretty simple. All right. The next thing we did was um, uh, I then went through a manual exercise of putting circles on and the map and trying to figure out where the position all those circles for each of the cities and writing down all the coordinates. And then I went back to my Excel spreadsheet and I popped in a coordinate for the X and Y position for the capital city. Um, for both the Netherlands and for um, Australia. Um, and then um, I was able to uh, use those coordinates to basically draw a circle on there with a radius of five um, here, um, and then put some text on there in purple that basically has the capital city name. Amsterdam is also a capital um, over here, um, but it's not the capital of a state so I put Amsterdam down manually 
which is different to Australia because Australia, the capital is a capital of a territory. Um, so I could actually use the line item, but I, I had the line item already established for um, North um, North Holland um, to be um, to be Harlem. Uh, and so uh, I wasn't, uh, I had to put um, Amsterdam on manually. So I've just put Amsterdam on manually. That's this one. Um, and then also with the current region information, I then grabbed uh, the current region information that we uh, we have. Um, and basically uh, up here on the, on the screen, you'll see that when you select um, Nord Holland, uh, it pops up the name of the, the region, the current population the population that lives there and the percentage of the total population and I did that by by using um, these this formula here so I just put some text on the screen uh, I changed the size of the font um, I put the name of the selected item the, the population um, uh, as a as a number and then I rounded up in uh, formula to, to get the population divided by the total population expressed as a percentage so that I could um, with one decimal point um, and then I closed out the SVG file. So that's quite magical. Um, and that allowed me to now interact with this, um, this, this control by selecting the different states. And I can go around and actually get some more information about the state. If I go on to Australia, I can compare um, Victoria, um, which has got 6.4 6 million people population. So I can skip around that as well and actually start to see things as well. Uh, and if things aren't quite working right, it's pretty simple to change. So Australian Capital Territory is big, too big. So what we might do is reduce the size of this font. Um, so that's easy enough to just come down to here to the text and just actually say we want it to be 24, 23. 23 fits nicely. Uh, and now we've actually got that font looking quite nice on, the, on that graph as well. So I hope um, that was um, that was interesting. Um, uh, you'll be able to stop, rewind, and pause the video and follow this um, this code along. Um, I've pretty much showed you all the hooks and and how to how to do it um, I, along the way. So um, hopefully you have some fun with uh, SVG files. Um, they are really really cool to actually change the way you can visualize data. You don't need to visualize data in lists. Uh, anymore, you can actually visualize data on on charts and on um, and in um, in graphs and uh, in maps as well. So um, I would ex ex uh, hope that you would actually go out and have a look at some of this SVC SVG stuff. And uh, you know, as I said, go down and have a look at some of the links to um, to Robin's website. Um, most of his videos are in German, um, which. I'm okay with because I'm picking up some words from Dutch and some of the words are similar in German. So I do pick up some of his words, but um, he does go slow enough to actually follow along with the tutorials. So please go, for, go for, feel free to go and have a look at those as well. Um, but yeah, have a great night and uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.